Jason rang to complain that you forgot to disinfect the cat utility area. Again? If she's too fastidious to change her own cat litter, she shouldn't have a cat. Here, here. I don't know what's got into you lately, Laurel, but you seem to be in danger of forgetting our company ethic, which is... The customer is king. Nothing is too much trouble. Exactly. So, onwards and upwards, eh, ladies? Oh. Any joy? I've tried cash bribes, blackmail, emotional and financial, but Bonnie won't shift. I should put her on a train this morning. Coffee, please. Anything else? Got a wide selection of bakery goods? Or um, some fat-free biscuits? No, just coffee. Apologise to that creature. Over my dead body. Look, the worse we can make her feel, the more chance there is of me hanging on to Jean. So get yourself up there and have another go at her. And then I will turn up as if by magic to pick up the pieces. Well, as long as she doesn't take advantage. I mean, you know what these lesbians are like. Sniff of an opportunity and you have to fend them off with fire irons. Fend who off with what? Would you mind looking after the shop? Like I'm not busy enough in there. It's a matter of life or death, Donna. If anybody wants a pension, I'll be an hour. Thank you. Morning, Val. How are you? You stayed out all night? Yes. So it would appear. Excuse me. I was wondering, would you like to go out tonight? It's my birthday tomorrow, Ashley. I only thought maybe we... Ashley. Sorry. Sanderson's just called. Jackie's taking a turn for the worse, so they want you to call around. Oh. Duty calls, eh? I'll see you later. So, shall I book a table for tonight? Yeah, whatever. Must be hard for her. Seen a wedding day come and go. You think it's easy for me? <laughs> Have you heard the one about the antique dealer with a strangulated hernia? This thing's a monster! Uh, you really don't want to know the circumstances in which I last heard those words. Hiya! Uh, Dad, I need a favour. A bit busy at the moment. It's kind of urgent. Well, put your pectoris where your mouth is. Oh. You know, Simon's mother's torn a ligament. Yeah, yeah, remind me to send her some flowers, all right? <laughs> anyway, um, she can't work with a bad arm, and uh, Bonnie's got this romantic weekend planned with a fella, and, and well, she couldn't leave a sick mother on her own, could she? So I've asked her to come and stay with us. You could have consulted me first. You said you loved having her at Christmas. He didn't. That was half her problem. We've got tons of room at home. We're not equipped to look after invalids. She'd be on her own all day. I'll cover this place, free you up. Thank you. Look, I don't mind her having dinner with us every night, but I'd be far happier if she was somewhere where she could be looked after by someone else. Like a nursing home? No, no, no. I was thinking more about the, uh, the B&B. &B. Uh, you can't shove my soon-to-be mother-in-law in some scabby guest house. Well, if she realises it's inconvenient, she might, uh, she might postpone the visit, eh? <laughs> uh, um, uh, Simon's already on his way to the station to pick her up. I'd better go and book her in then, hadn't I? Right, I better get off to work. Do you want your uncle's hat to give you a lift? No, it's all right. I've got to get my fitness levels up to army standards. Don't want showing up on that assault course, do I? Don't have your chin all weathers. Uh, house bricks on your back, blisters on your feet. Yeah, and I'll have glutes so firm you can crack an egg on them. <laughs> <coughs> Oi! <coughs> what have I told you? Outside! See you later. See you, love. It's unnatural. Dingles don't do rules and discipline. Well, apart from our own. Well, she's living it up at training camp. We've got to deal with her father. Then what she wants us to do? Wrap him in a straight jacket till she gets back. <sighs> she might not come back. Hmm? No, love. They don't send them to war straight away. Well, she could be sent anywhere in the country, anywhere around the world. I mean, she's not going to be posted to Otten when she comes out of training, is she? I think it's time we convened an extraordinary family meeting. We've got a crisis on our hands. You know, we're not so keen on doubles for single occupancy. Well, a single, then. Uh, one week minimum. I'll pay you in advance. 
Well, we're currently closed for refurbishment. In fact, the builders should be back in about five minutes. Yeah, why the hell didn't you say that? Good afternoon. Lovely day. Usual spot. Mm -hmm. I'll be waiting. Okay. Louise! Hold on. Hi. What happened to your quiet out with the crossword? Well, we always used to go out together, uh, save the pain from the brain, eh? Okay. Come on. <laughs> Can't be an easy day for you. No, you're right there. You okay? I should be walking down the aisle today, not chucking bleach down other people's toilets. Well, I'm sure Ashley is as disappointed as you are, you know? Well, if he is, he's making a flipping good show of hiding it. Well, he hasn't mentioned anything. No, not a sausage. And since he's keeping his thoughts to himself, I'm never going to know, am I? Still, life goes on. Is it him that's upsetting you, love? No. No, I'm fine, honest. Come on, you. Who does she think she is? She's no right to threaten you. Oh, she wouldn't even know how to find the top light, let alone pay for one. I wouldn't put it past her. Rachel's in court this morning, but she said she'd call me back. She's only going to tell you the same as I am. Think about it, Zoe. Scott's not even on the birth certificate. He is still her father. And you're her mum. I recognise them knees anywhere. Time we did a bit of painting, eh, Jean? Your gran and your mum need a bit of a chat. Oi! Come back here with my granddaughter. She's a bad influence on Jean. Too much attitude for her own good. Before I throw you off my property, I think I should inform you, you're not the only one taking legal advice. Scott's really angry about the way I spoke to you last night. It's never bothered him before. He's asked me to come here and apologise. My only excuse is... Uh, my granddaughter means the world to me. Point noted. Now you can leave. Please, find it in your heart to listen to a loving grandmother. The thought of losing her is just unbearable. I've got a call, I better dash. Ten minutes, OK? I am sick. I've seen Andy and his new bird snug all over the place. What, Libby? Yeah. She stays over all the time. She cooked us this rank tea last night and the kitchen still stinks of garlic. Well, I can't bother. Dog got hold of a pair of knickers and she went mental. Reckon they cost a fortune. So, her and Andy are serious then, are they? I thought you didn't care. Well, I don't give a stuff if I never see him again. I'm so over him. I'm not stopping, Donna. We're picking up family members as we go. Come on, Debbie, you need it at home. Why? Go where? Urgent family business back at the ranch. Hiya. Ah. Here you go, Dan. I'm just grabbing a smoothie. I need to up my vitamin intake. Has you got time, Marlon? Hmm? Time for what? <clears throat> what are you talking about, Donna? Well, you just said that you Why aren't you at work? I'm, uh, I'm just here snatching a stolen moment with my sweetness. Oh, were you? Oh. Can't move around here for snogging couples. Makes one a puke. See ya. <laughs> so what's the big secret? No time. See ya. What? What about birthdays and Christmas? All those precious moments that mean so much. I'll make sure you're kept in touch. Look, deny a child their roots and later on in life you will pay. Gina's part of your family. That won't change. Oh, what do you know of family? Your sort think that two women and a turkey baster constitute a secure family unit. And you have just demonstrated beautifully why I don't want Jean to grow up thinking that bigotry and homophobia are at all acceptable. I think now would be a very good time to leave. Excuse me, but I haven't finished yet. Job done, I think. <sighs> right on time. I can't. Brought your personal trainer, yeah, have you? I couldn't help you just tagged along. Enjoying the view? Um, oh, I had to uh, pull over to take a call. It's illegal to use these things on a move. Yeah, absolutely. Safety first every time, right? Oh, yeah. You what? You never stop me, and I've just had hands free put on my car. Yeah, well, do as I say, Terry, not as I do. See ya. See ya. I'd like to convene this family meeting. No. The matter at the top of the agenda today. Well, whoever's birthday is your cards in the post. Marlon and Emily just popped round uh, to discuss... Auntie Sheba's hysterectomy. Yeah, and Emily's got all the gory details. 
Just pints of blood. Oh, and her ovaries. I'll uh, just sit this one out, huh? Zach? Uh, no. Right. <clears throat> For some reason, Chaz has decided to leave the loving bosom of her family. Wouldn't have anything to do with the fact that you persecuted a boyfriend, would it? She was very fond of him, and you didn't exactly make things easy for her. It wasn't her fault it was a copper. Be that as it may, <laughs> if she does go, we have the ticking time bomb on our hands that is Shadrach unleashed. Now, do we want to take responsibility for that? All those in favour? Against? No, we're all agreed. So, Chaz cannot, under any circumstances, be allowed to leave. In favour. <laughs> now, all we've got to do is persuade her to change her mind. I'm, I'm really sorry. I asked her to come up here to apologise and not to have another go at you. She sets foot through those gates one more time and I will have her arrested for trespass. She just made things worse. She's upset about losing Jean. She can't control herself. Well, if she thinks that raging histrionics is going to help her cause, she's sadly mistaken. I will have a word with that and it won't happen again. And however tempting it might be, for Jean's sake, don't let this affect us. I suppose you can't choose your family. I know you'd understand. Right, I'd better get TJ back. There's no rush, is there? Jean would love someone to play with. Are you sure? Yeah. You'd best make the most of her while she's still here. <laughs> she hasn't just got her fingernails into him. She's impaled him with her talons. Very attractive woman is Glynis. Oh, yeah, if you're wearing sunglasses in a darkened room with a broken light bulb and a lunar eclipse, maybe. Oh, what the hell does he see in her? Power is a noted aphrodisiac. She's a local councillor, not leader of the flaming free world. He stayed out all night, Bob. All night. But maybe I'm being a bit oversensitive here. But is someone just a teensy, weensy, weensy bit jealous? Jealous of her? Still, if, if you just want to sit and watch Glynis the gold digger snatch your fella from under your nose... It's not my fella. <sighs> that, my sweet, is obvious. And he's, he's gonna stay that way. At least he took away the kitten heels and fight. Backbone, Valerie. Think women warriors. Boudicca. Maggie Thatcher. Me and Simon will entertain her. All you have to do is be nice. <sighs> well, I suppose it does seem a bit inhospitable to send her to a hotel when we've got two spare bedrooms at home. Yeah, it'll be great. We can all play Sing Along a Cliff after dinner. Thanks, Dad. You should get your bedroom door reinforced while you're at it, just in case she begins sleepwalking again. She never. Yeah, well, she has been known to creep around the staircase in the early hour. Well, uh, I'll go and get the spare room ready then, shall I? Yeah, mark the gin bottle while you're at it. I don't want you to go, obviously. But you have your own life, and I respect that. Hello, Zoe. Oh, hi, Rachel. Yeah, just give me a minute. Okay. Okay. You should keep a muzzle on your mother. Why don't you stick to what you're paid to do, eh? We just look after my daughter. That's a lovely painting, darling. But why don't we paint another one for your mummy? And she's so much to stay for, hasn't she? An alcoholic incontinent father, no boyfriend, a low flying bar job with no prospects. I'd get well away from this dump if I was her. That's not very helpful, Debbie. Look, we've agreed. She's only leaving because she doesn't feel valued. <laughs> well, she's not the only one, but you don't catch me running enough to join the army. Then what is needed is a charm offensive. No violence. I thought I made that crystal clear. No, 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 no. What she's saying is we all be so nice to her that she finds it impossible to tear herself away. That's it. Fantastic idea. You're only about 20 years too late. OK, that's great, I love it. Good news? <clears throat> Jean, why don't you show your mummy what you've been painting? Eh? Oh, that is Look. lovely. There's mummy, <laughs> daddy, Jean, and I think that's Peggy. Aww. Can I take this home? I know I've kept all of her paintings. Well, it might be worth a fortune one day. You'll need to send all of her stuff over, you know, when you go. Yes, of course. 
kind of crept up on me what it actually feels like to be a dad. All I know is that I, I love her more than anything else in the world. I would do anything for her. But I want what's best for her. Whatever happens to you and me. Come on, TJ. Let's get yourself cleared up, eh? Have you brought the clockers with you, Mother? Oh! <laughs> what, have you got a body in here? A <laughs> body, a body. Oh, Rodney, you're so funny, a body. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm a bit unsteady on my feet. I thought it was the arm that was the problem. Well, the pain affects my balance. Oh, oh, oh could you just help me up those little steps? I'd be so grateful. Yes, of course. Oh, thank you. I could not have done that better myself. Respect for a genuine Norma Desmond moment. Be nice. <sighs> There's Mummy. There's Daddy. There's Jean. That's Peggy, look. Oh, well, she's obviously indoctrinated that child, otherwise there'd be another blob there, the grandma. I never thought you'd be such a soppy dad. You have to make the most of their early years, Donna, because uh, you never get that time back. And are you making the most of Dawn, too? I can handle Dawn. The main thing is, managed to do some damage limitation. Thank you, Mother. Well, I did try to apologise, but I couldn't stop myself from telling her a few home truths, and then she called me bigoted, homophobic and small-minded. They're facts, Mum, not insults. Well, I think she fell for it. Oh, well. we better start thinking about what our next plans will be, haven't we? You know, if you don't speak to her, she might think you're avoiding the issue. What's the alternative? Remind her she's stuck in a relationship that's going nowhere fast. She's hurting. And she's too proud to admit it, but she needs your support. It's not as if I can do anything about this situation, though, is it? Just talk to her, will you? Because if you don't today, it'll be too late. Now, if we're interrupting your devotional duties, just speak out and we'll come back later. Nothing's too much trouble. I'll start in the church then, Betty. All right, love. Actually, if you could excuse us, I'd like a quiet word with Laurel. And about time, too. Just between you and me, she's been like a wet weekend in Whitby these last few days. Thank you, Betty. Yeah, well, just see you sort it out, young man. She's too young and good-looking to be so miserable. Oh, in hospital. They said they'd never seen one quite like it. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> Medical curiosity, aren't you, Mother? They had to operate under local. That appalling tugging sensation and the sound of your own flesh being ripped open with a scalpel. Oh, it'll live with me to my dying day. Well, uh, you're here now. <laughs> Nicola, I will be needing a little assistance with my more intimate requirements, all girls together, eh, Nicola? No, sorry, I've got an emergency cleaning job in Hotton. Oh, it's just to help with my hair and my makeup and my general toilet. <laughs> I mean, I could only decently ask another woman. Yeah, sorry, you know, all the chemicals at work, dermatitis, sex, more infection. You know, ask Steph, she'll do anything. See you later. Hey, let me, uh, let me get you something a little stronger, Leslie. Yeah? Oh, I'd love a GNT, thank you. <laughs> Simon, you wouldn't be an angel, would you? There's a teensy weensy little draft on my poorly arm. I'll go get you a blanket. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're all being so very kind. And you're being so very brave. Oh, do you know, that's what my consultant said. He said Leslie, because we're on first name terms by then. Oh, it was charming, absolutely charming. He said, Leslie. You're being so very brave, considering the fact that you're in agony. <laughs> Target in sight's nine o'clock. Deploy missiles. Fire! Eric, delightful to see you. Ah, reciprocated, Valerie. Reciprocated. How was your night on the tails with the glamorous Glynis? A nightmare, from start to finish. She didn't try to get frisky with you, did she? I took one look at the room full of thrusting, vibrant go-getters and I felt like a hundred thousand years old. Oh, can't have been that bad. You stayed out all night. I took a room to escape the young, the beautiful and the upwardly mobile. And I saw myself in their eyes. And what I saw was a dinosaur. You've got years to go yet. You're only a minor fossil at 60. <laughs> in my 60 years on this planet, what have I accomplished? Lords? Name me one thing that makes my life worthwhile. And you have to ask. You met me, didn't you? 
And you know, the best way to beat those sexagenarian blues, and it's not a smutty movie, by the way. <laughs> I shudder to think. A celebration to end all of this. What do you think? I'll consult my diary. No, if you'll excuse me. Not a great deal of enthusiasm. Mm, so she's hijacked his birthday, has she? Well, stuff her, cos she's got her work cut out if she thinks it's gonna beat what I've got planned for him. Which is? Details, Bob, details. But he's spending his 60th birthday with me if I have to bind and gag him and lock him in the cellar. Hello. If you've got work stuff to do, I'll come back later. Today would have been our wedding day. You remembered. As if I could forget. I just didn't want to put my foot in it. It upset you even more. Oh. Worse things happen, eh? I love you. That won't change. You do know that. Yeah, I do. Ethan said... Sorry. Sorry, bad timing. Oh, no, no, it's all right. I was going to go anyway. I booked that table for tonight, then. Just me and you. I'd like that. Today should have been the happiest day of her life. She's been so brave. Breaks my heart. <laughs> 